Well, welcome to the Value Working Group. Here we are. Welcome to the Value Working Group uh, on October 21st. Please add yourself in the meeting. Uh, first thing in the meeting was OSPO plus plus. I don't know who has added this, no clue. So if any of you know or any idea, it was just written as agenda OSPO plus plus. Uh, so that would, I don't know, maybe it's me, but I can speak to this a little bit. So we, oh, there's Jacob actually. So we, well, hello. Oh, Jacob. Hello. So you're muted or we can't hear you one way or the other. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. All right. So actually Good. Jacob's here and he, this is, so we're trying to find points of connection between the chaos project and OSPO plus plus, which is the work that, that Jacob is heavily involved in. Um, and so essentially OSPO plus plus is really about focusing on, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but focusing on the development of open source program offices within the scientific and academic space. Um, and there have been a number of universities that have already participated or like kind of advanced this work. Um, and I know that on the horizon, there are others who are also others, meaning universities who are um, expressing interest in developing open source program offices. And um, there's a community of people that have an interest in this space. Um, and so the, the chaos project doesn't, that's not necessarily what we do is develop OSPOs inside of <laughs> universities. Um, but one of the one of the hopes is is that that as OSPOs are are being advanced uh, globally, uh, one of the things that they're going to to need at some point is a way to to understand the impact that um, their researchers and academics are having in the software space, and that's where chaos comes in. So through our tooling, whether it's Augur or Grimoire Lab and our set of metrics uh, to really provide the OSPOs kind of when they're looking around and saying, what are the things that are available to me as an organization to really help to understand the impact uh, in this space, what's available? And that's where chaos can come in. So I think chaos kind of would represent maybe one layer of the many layers that OSPO++ is doing so there are many things like OSPO++ has to deal a lot with probably political structures within universities. That's not something we do. OSPO++ has to think about kind of the arrangement of work within an OSPO at a university. Again, that's not something we do. Um, but when the question arises as to what are the, the tools and ways that we can gain a better understanding of how our academics are participating in this world, that's where we come in. Um, Jacob, did you want to add anything to that? No, I mean, it, it just in general, um the higher level construct is is the idea of institutionalizing open source you know we have lots of various different ap uh, avenues for open source engagement with open with with universities in general but we don't have a single um uh, a home for it with the, within the university con context we don't have the office of open source and so that's what we're really trying to kind of kind of build i think part of the um the value of that has has been when we're talking to upper levels of administration, et cetera, is really to um, they're looking to satisfy their their mission goals, whether that be internal mission goals, external engagement mission goals, or the system, the academic system that they're in. Though any any one of those aspects is gonna to touch on metrics, however, in order to being able to justify and being able to show progress. So for as a, as a you know, case in point, building the open source program office at Johns Hopkins, metrics were used very extensively in terms of the, the promise of metrics to be able to, to uh, sell why this office is important. Even if we haven't actually uh, gone into the operational step of uh, of, of collecting what, the, what those metrics are. So even at this very beginning, in the formative stages of OSPOs, metrics are really important for people to understand you know, what, what, what potentially we can do with them for uh, OSPOs, for the institutionalization of open source, 
in order uh, not just like the, the nuts and bolts of how do we do it what you know what actual metric and you know digging deep into the operations of collecting the metrics at a top level it, it's really important as well i can't i really can't stress that enough cool and so listening to this uh, i feel like so the question is coming like why uh why we need our school how we can justify our school and like looking at yes. this and how we can in, a, advance our school in these so answering those questions we need some metric that can uh, give us a justification for the management or for the uh, a governing body or something like that both justification and but also um value proposition i would say okay so if, if we go back to why is open source important at a university context okay the answer is different at the provost level than at the dean level than at the you know the department level than at the researcher level than the that, you know than at the faculty level each one has a different answer to that okay metrics are going to be involved in all of them okay certain one of those certain if we're talking about building an open source program office we typically are going at the higher levels of, uh, in that kind of stack in terms of the justification. All right. Uh, so it's really about uh, both the justification and also kind of what is the value proposition. So for example, the way the provost level at Johns Hopkins started to understand the value of open source was through the, the idea that um, the code being produced by the university out of research is actually a primary research data output. And when you frame right, it in that, argument. yeah, <clears throat> and if you, when you frame it in that way, you have $3 billion going in into a research engine. The output is the paper, the papers that get written, the, the data that supports the paper and the code that's used to generate that data. Okay. We need we need an open source program office for in, in this context to help support valid and appropriate output of code. What license does it choose? Do we, how do we do translation? All all those other stuff, but we, we, we frame it as a primary research output, just okay. like any other company is outputting product. You want to make sure that product is the best it can be. So getting a handle on open source for the code portion of that becomes really important to the total output of the research endeavor. That argument is going to be different from the academic side, from teaching. That argument is going to be different from, you know, translation and community impact side. Each one is going to be different, but the value proposition of metrics, you know, is in all of these arguments. Okay. Uh, so what, so I think there's an overlap between what Jacob is trying to accomplish and what we are trying to accomplish in the chaos project um, from a support each other perspective. And so one of the things that we're proposing, I had talked to Jacob prior to this meeting was a series of, of so I explained the whole metrics model idea to Jacob that we have this set of 70 atomic <clears throat> metrics that we have available to us and that we can draw metrics together in in ways that are meaningful in particular contexts and to particular people. Um, in our case, I might actually have some idea what a metrics model might look like just because I'm an academic and Sean, you, you would yeah, too, oh right? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> But it's important that we probably listen to a whole bunch of people, kind of like what we always do in the chaos project, listen to a bunch of people as to what some of these models could be. And so Jacob is proposing, I think there's kind of what would what could be a kickoff um, presentation in an OSPO++ meeting, which is coming up when, Jacob? So that... We originally had scheduled it for November um, 18th. Mm -hmm. We wanted to get Daniel from Baturgia on, and there's an Intersource com uh, Commons um, Summit that same day. So one of the things I wanted to do on this call was to see if there was a better day that might work. But in general, we're looking for it in November. 
Okay. Um, when is the regular cadence for those meetings? I mean, would it be, is it Thursdays, if I recall? Yeah, we try to do it at Thursdays at noon Eastern. Okay. Um, but we do have some flexibility on that. Um, okay. So let's see. And I, I, Sean is also like yeah, Sean working with uh, the scientific community. Yeah. So I'd like to draw Augur <laughs> into this as yeah. well. Yeah, like we could we could put together some sample metrics models for you as a demonstration if you have a set of projects that you want to work with. That'd probably be a pretty good idea, just in terms of like like seeding the conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people really are able to respond better to concrete metrics representations so, than they are to definitions of metrics, which are very abstract when you're trying to think about how to apply it in a domain. Sean, how would the 11th work, November 11th work for you it's at 11? Yeah, that's a good day. That'll work. 11 your time. Um, 11 a.m. is generally a good time. And if it works for you, it works for me because that means it works for no me. chaos, there's no chaos meetings then. There isn't. <laughs> and and I happen to have an hour right then. So, yeah, no, I, actually, it's wide open on my calendar. Can we put a can we put a hold on both the 11th and the 18th and, and we'll circle back in 48 hours with a, with a final one? Yep, both work for me. Yep, both That'd work for me as well. Thank you very much. Um, can you, Jacob, could you put the proposed agenda maybe in the chat or the minutes you had yeah. circulated? I was going to uh, do that real quick. So part of what we wanted to do on this on this session, and here's the, sorry, here's the chat. There's the proposed um, event schedule. So on November eighth, we were looking to, because Oslo Plus Plus is only meeting once a month these days on the academic side because we spun up a European uh, one for governments and agent and agencies. Um, this academic one. Um, we wanted to get a, a good recording of metrics just to introduce the topic and then have a separate session about really, you know, how we would work as a community to, to implement some of these things. Um, so we wanted to break it up into the following, uh, and if you're following along in the document a little bit, um, start off with a, the general landscape of what metrics are. Matt, we wanted to see if you you and Sean could outline that from a little bit of, of your long history in, in the space, just mm -hmm. in terms of, of showing what metrics are for, for code, in, open source in, in general. Then I wanted to go into a specific implementation of that, which is around the community aspect of that, and have Don Foster and Richard have a discussion about that. Um, then going into a specific in terms of uh, introducing Daniel to tie metrics to Osbos. He's been doing a lot of work on that. And he does, he had a great presentation in London a few weeks ago that I thought really, really hit the nail on the head. And then uh, Stephen Jacobs and, and RIT have been doing a lot of work with Mystic around it really then ex expanding this into a specific implementation to help, to help support uh, ac uh, academic space. Uh, and I understand that the, uh, they did a great presentation at KSCon that, that went off really well, was well received um, for, for Emmy and, and Stephen. So that was kind of the, you know, 10 minutes kind of each at, at, at the start and then at the top. And then this whole block together would be an introductory thing, introducing the whole space for metrics, open source and OSPOs for anyone that wanted to come later and, and get more information on it. So that's, that's what this session itself would be. The follow-up sub subsequent session is then how do we, is more the community oriented side of things and saying, what can, can our two groups do together? setting up a specific workshop or two around that to help get metrics models for you guys. We're launching a project also um, around mapping the interface between uh, op open source and the, uh, the open source world in general at academia. And th that's another area we, where we might um, uh, bring in metrics. I talked to Georg about that this week in Raleigh. Um, so that's a little bit of, of where we're at. Can I make, I mean, this sounds good. Can I make a comment on the agenda that you shared? Absolutely. 
Yeah. So one, so Sean, okay. So from a software perspective, if we're going to have the connection with chaos, but Tergy is actually a for-profit company and the software is Grimoire Lab. And I would, that distinction I think is important for this because I don't, I don't want to have the community necessarily, but it's yeah. be promoting I, I, a particular piece a particular for-profit organization. Yeah, and I think it would be helpful to present Augur as well. Because so we have maybe, actually done a lot of work with scientific software and academic production, and I don't think Grimoire Lab has. Um, would, that's uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I'm wondering if Sean, you could connect with Daniel because you've kind of done this in the past. That like there's a like a, yeah, the, a the, the only reason I wanted to bring in Daniel on this because Daniel has a really good way of connecting metrics to OSPOs. And we have a case in point where universities have the first thing we did at the Hopkins one was engage Batergia because at the end of the day, someone actually has to go do the work. And so this was a, you know, the rest of this is from from a you know academic point of view, community point of view, et cetera. But if we're expecting the next 20 OSPOs to actually go get this work done and they don't have the experience, this was a case in point of here's a, a practical way where they might be able to, to do that. And that's fair. I just think it needs to be clear that, I mean, Batergia is a yeah, it is a for profit, profit yeah, yeah, company. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not super comfortable just promoting one. And in fact, it might be reasonable to say we have options here. Yeah. And here are a couple of different tools. Yeah, and there's lots of players in the space. This is an example of one of them. So would it, yeah. I'm wondering if Sean, it would be possible, because I know you've worked with Daniel in the past. That, like, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Dan Daniel's definitely got a good knowledge of inner source concerns generally, um, and has been active in that community. So I think that's a, that's a value that he adds um, to it. I'm wondering I can if- talk with him. Yeah, I'm wondering if there could be like, it would be Richard for the facilitator opening, me for the, over, just me alone for the overview of metrics and landscape. And then- I mean, I, I think, go ahead. I think that's something we'd have to do together because I don't think the metric landscape really is a story without the metrics tools. Well, let me just finish the thought here. <clears throat> All right. So then Don and Richard would be um, chaos community and the sustained community. And then it would be like Daniel, Sean, Stephen, and Emmy as like software or like the deployment of metrics, something along those lines. And so like point four there, point three and four would just come to include Sean an auger. This is a this is for an OSPO plus plus university type audience though, right? Yeah. Correct. This is this is giving <clears throat> high level introductions to these things. My my thought is that if if there's a if we have a set of repos that this group would naturally be interested in, it might be effective to introduce metrics through the lens of actual concrete metrics. Well, you have some examples, Sean. I mean, oh, I know, I, yeah. Just if you're, yeah, I you're, just, <clears throat> I think, I think um, there's not a clear division between metrics themselves and the software that builds them. And like, there's a landscape, I, I guess I'm trying, I'm struggling to figure out what the landscape discussion is for an audience unfamiliar with metrics because <clears throat> I do think they'll respond better to concrete implementations. Well, I can step aside if you want to, I mean, I was just going to talk. No, I'm about not, I don't want you to step aside. I'm just trying to think of a way to weave it together. I mean, I think, I think presenting it in a woven together format is going to resonate, but. Yeah, my, I mean, I guess my idea was really just to kind of give a high level overview of kind of the work we're doing in chaos mm -hmm. at point two.
maybe that's after, it. And maybe as maybe as part of that, we could present some of the analysis we've done of scientific software. But why why wouldn't that just occur in points four and five now? I don't know if you're looking at the sheet. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I wouldn't want to like. I don't think so. When it comes to this audience, like Daniel bring Daniel brings one dimension, which is the overall sort of high level in inner source, and we bring the actual experience working with scientific open source well, software. Yeah, they have time. two. I mean, they've worked with. I think they've worked with RIT and Johns Hopkins. Yeah. So Daniel yeah. connects <clears throat> open source connects Ospos and metrics. He, he's of, of this whole panel, he has the most experience in the, in the thought leadership around actual OSPO and metrics. Not at a project basis, but as a, for the construct of OSPO, Daniel does a really good job of that. Yeah, and that, yeah, and that I would, I'd characterize that as importantly different from the scientific domain. So go explain maybe. I mean, we've we've with, we've used Augur on gigantic collections of open source scientific software from a number of perspectives, which is, I think, where OSPO plus plus organizations want to go, but it's not where RIT and Johns Hopkins have been yet. So there's a there's a starting with the OSPO piece, which is I think where Daniel has a lot to offer, but there's also the the scientific endeavor which is where we've spent a good deal of energy in the last year and a half, two years. And those are, the domain is different than the OSPO. So maybe it could be like connecting metrics with the OSPO, which would be Daniel. Mm -hmm. And then like digging metrics digging in the scientific deeply, enterprise dig, digging right? deeply into the scientific enterprise or something yeah. like that yeah I, 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 I might frame it the following way is daniel can help shape what, why in the formation of an ospo you're in general going to want to have metrics to understand the performance of your ospo then there's the second thing which is one of the endeavors the ospo is going to do with in academia is apply metrics to large amounts of, of, of academic code and, and spaces in these projects. It is a tool. Fair. That's where Sean's work, you know, and, and you can talk about a lot of the work you've done in that process. So it's two, two uses of metrics. One is to justify the OSPO, the actual operations of it. And then the other is actually as a tool, how can you be more effective in what the OSPO is going to do? I think that's fair. Sean, do you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think they're separate discussions, and I think you framed it that way. And I could even sp split it out into two two things. So I think, they, I think they are really two distinct things. Yeah. So let me actually make make one more point here. Um, Ospos. I think that's fair. Academic work, academic, whatever. Performance. How's that sound, Sean? Are you looking at it? I would say <clears throat> metric. I would say more like metrics for for the academic and scientific enterprise. But okay, because it's it's <clears throat> it's really not about performing work. I think it's about the close connection between the development of software and the conduct of con conducting of research. It, it, particularly in the life sciences, they're almost inextricable at this point. And we have a good deal of anecdotal and metrics-based evidence to illustrate that. 
<clears throat> which I think the OSPO plus plus organization would be interested in that discussion. <clears throat> so then for point, okay, so then on point five, maybe you just say metrics for the academic and scientific enterprise instead yeah. of the program. Yeah, I think Jacob made that change. I'm watching the live action replay of the doc edits. Okay. We'll get rid of the word performing is what I'm saying. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that's probably true. The, the. yeah. Yeah, that's oh. good. And so then Sean, I think instead, I think even just like bringing any of the work that you've done on any of the scientific repositories exactly. would be enough. It'd be enough to, <laughs> without asking ahead of time. You yep. could just say, here's one, oh, yeah. for yep. example. Yeah, and these projects are all projects that people are familiar with. So yeah, exactly. Okay. There's no, these are high, high profile academic and, re and scientific process. Project. Okay. And so it's, it is, it's, it was really actually, it's interesting because I hadn't really thought about point four metrics that help the OSPOs justify themselves. Cause I had always just been on point five that at some point, yeah, the, the university is going to care and the faculty are going to care if somebody's looking at their work and yeah, we need I think to, to metric that to some degree. Yeah. And if I remember from uh, the conversation, that I had uh, with um, Richard, <clears throat> not um, with with um, person on the call who is MossLabs.io, whose name is escaping me. Jacob was Jacob, right here. Yes, yeah. Like from the conversation I recall, I think part of part of the value there for this group is understanding what an ASPO does and why that that alone is a value proposition from a university perspective. And I, I think that has been Jacob's like push the entire time. Right, right. Like, exactly. We don't have to do that. So I think, and so I think, yeah, and I think Dan, I think Daniel enhances that argument, you know, yes. with his inner source stuff. And that's distinct from, okay, now here's a concrete application of chaos metrics in a scientific and academic enterprise and how they are helpful and useful. Well, and he'll have concrete examples <laughs> of how metrics help you justify the OSPO to the Right. for example, and you'll have concrete metrics that help look under the hood of, say, funded scientific research. Right. Yep. Yeah, because I think I think that that con those concrete examples that I'll illustrate will help to help to draw the connection between the tech transfer objectives mm -hmm. that a lot of universities yes. have and and metrics like they'll draw that line pretty clearly agreed i totally agreed i totally agree not agreed agreed i, I agreed <laughs> i agreed i'm reading myself in the third person past tense <laughs> bob dole loved it <laughs> cool so may so maybe then here we will develop the metrics on those areas that will support the ospos like uh, on justifying the OSPO and uh, metrics for the academic scientists. Yes. So I think this first talk is just kind of saying, hey, here's here are the things that you need to care about. End of okay. conversation. And then we have a follow up work or um, a follow up workshop that says, okay, now we can we convince you or talked about why you care. Let's talk about the actual models that you would need for points four and point five. Right. Like, what are the things that you actually need to, to look at? Yeah. And is that forward. and is that two different workshops? You know, where each 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 one we do number four, half of it we do four, and when we do five, or we do do we one do one workshop on four, one workshop on five? Yeah, and that can be the that can Richard can kind of yeah like closing and next next steps kind of thing. Yep. At the end there. One of the things that. I was um, discussing with Georg this this week was the idea, though, that 
OSPOs are a, are, are a slow, it's, it's slow to build OSPOs. This is not a, a quick thing that you just, hey, build an OSPO and 30 of them build an OSPO. This is culture change. This is setting up an organization in, you know, in the university, Justif justification, getting head count, <coughs> all of that. That's a significant lift per each one. So it, there's, a, there's a lag in this. One of the things we may wanna do, because I think we are at the right point on, on, in history and in the momentum of this, is to see if we can't get some more activity going at the intersection between academia and the open source world. And so one of the things I wanted to explore is what are the metrics models for just even understanding um, the interaction between the open source communities in general and, and, and academia. Mm -hmm. That map is missing. Mm -hmm. We don't have it. No one has that in the world. You know, what, what are the interface points for the Python Foundation? What universities and, and, and researchers do they engage in? Oh, everybody's using Python. <laughs> no, no, I know, but like from, from, a, from a more structured yeah. point of view, what, what yeah. about for the R community? What about for the such and such community? What about for the, you know, we're, and that, that'll be a continually growing thing, but right mm -hmm. now we're operating in the dark. Yeah. So to some degree, we, we were also looking at, okay, from a university point of view, what, what engagement points does that university have in open source communities? We can also ask it from the opposite direction of your, you have open source communities, how are they engaging with open source? And it's that bi-directional mapping. Doesn't have to be very deep, but that mapping, even a project to do that as a community-based project would activate a lot of folks in the open source world, as well as academia, Mm -hmm. to just start mapping this out. Mm -hmm. So is that, that's an addition to the list you have here. So that is what we're, we're going to tease up and okay. potentially talk about. So one of the things I want to, I want to have, have set up and I want to talk to Sloan before we launch this is to say, great, we've done this overview now of metrics, but now what is the community actions that we're going to do? For example, the work, those two workshops in order, in order to get the metrics models, a third one is this idea of mapping the uh, this interface between open source and mm -hmm. and um, and academia, and uh, that also touches on metrics. So there, I think there's really three workshops coming out of this, and next steps that are um, community based. Sean, have course. you looked at that last one at all with Augur? Kind of looked at like edu domains as like some sort of like we. I mean, we certainly. <laughs> We certainly could. I mean, the challenge the challenge with academics is that they don't always use their edu domains. Oh, um, look at me! Yeah, I mean, I'm only on Gmail, right? So it's it's knowing who your researchers are, and the, so the way that we've teased that out is we look at not only the projects that are in the scope, but we look at the other projects that someone has contributed to, and that gives us a pretty decent insight into whether they're focused in a scientific domain or a corporate domain. <clears throat> Scientists will generally contribute to other scientific open source software projects in addition to things like Python or an R library. So my one, my I don't deny that that third workshop would be interesting. So the first two workshops in the chaos project, we have the capacity and it takes time but we have the capacity to build out metrics and build out metrics models kind of following the approach that we've been doing for years so that's that's within our capacity wheelhouse the last one is would be a different effort yes right, right. and so we that that's probably not something that we inherently have capacity for so we'd have to think about that as well like i think the yeah, first yeah. two yeah I, 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 right. I, I, I'm not looking for you guys to take that on. I'm just saying yeah. the purpose of this session is to introduce metrics. The mm -hmm. output of this session is going to be, hey, we're going to have these two workshops to help the chaos community get, get metrics models. Mm -hmm. And the another output of this is introducing this mapping because we're blind to this, blind to this interface. And we want to do this not as an OSLO++ plus plus specific thing, but as a general thing for the broader community, lots of different parties are interested in, in this mapping. How might we as a community yeah. approach this 
No, I didn't think I didn't think you were kicking it to us. I was just thinking like in terms of resourcing, like I, like I, the first two, I think, are well within the OSPO yeah. plus. I don't know about your resourcing, but well within the OSPO plus plus resourcing and the chaos resourcing like that. Those first two workshops slot right in the third. I think we'd have to think about. And again, I know you weren't kicking it here, but I the think about like how that work would be organized and how it would be resourced and that kind of stuff. That's all. So yeah, I think yeah. I think the third one needs a little bit more. Oh yeah, the third, third one is is less baked. Um, and then maybe I, the baking I, will come out of the first two. Yeah, and I think that the third <clears throat> the third one the thing that we've seen is how do we activate the open source communities to be involved in this process? What is that hook? What is that you know? And I think that's kind of one of the things we were looking to do is uh, it, with that third one. Right, like if the communities themselves can see the level of university engagement. Yeah, like in hey, the reality. Hey, hey, Apache Foundation, we would like you to pull all of your different projects and find out how are they engaging with with academia, with those specifics. Who are they engaging with? What what universities, etc. That's that's yeah. missing. In, that's missing information. Yeah, no, and I can see why communities would want to know that. Yeah, because. Um, the resourcing models out of universities are different than volunteers and from for-profit companies. They're all, the angles that people come in are slightly different. Yeah. And um, like not having any light on <clears throat> perhaps 20% of your community as being from, from, from the academic space, um, you could you might be missing something or that would that, I think that'd be interesting so I think that's I think it's fair yeah and then also from the macro level you know like the European Commission just came out with the here's the economic impact of open source in Europe what what is the interaction between academia and on the open source communities in terms of you know is that that 20 percent you said is that one percent what is the economic impact? Well, yeah, how much? How, how much is going back and forth between these two, two major pillars of society, academia, and like you know? There's a lot. The, I mean, I think is it a you, lot. Is it a little? Like, what is the magnitude? What's going on here? We're, we're I, I think I think our university um, people who are in, interested in tech transfer will will have their eyebrows raised is when they realize how much their scientists are contributing to open source software and that that's kind of an invisible work or an invisible intellectual accomplishment inside their institution. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, agreed. Okay, this is cool. good. All right, I'll, I'll start uh, to work on, on this. I'll get you back uh, in, in, in by Monday at the latest with, with, a, with a firm date. Thank you very much. Is there anything else you guys need from me? No, that was good. Yeah, cool. that was really good. Well, look forward to work, work, working with you guys then. I'm going to drop and uh, take care of a few other things. All right. All right. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Bye. Cheers. All right. And that concludes the value working group. Yeah, I'm going to say, like, <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't think we can tackle anything else. That was pretty, this. that was good, though. I, I think, you know, I mean, I know we're being recorded, but I, it's nice yeah. to get that point of connection. Uh, between OSPO plus plus because I, I just yeah, even if it's agreed. a slow burn to mm -hmm. like build the OSPO OSPOs within universities, it's same deal for us, right? It's not right. it's a slow burn to build the metrics and the metrics models, and like getting those aligned with Augur, for yeah, example, yeah. like that's not something you just do overnight. So no, okay, cool. That was good. Yeah, productive. So then uh, on the developing metrics, uh, what is the roadmap for the academic? Once you are done with this meeting and- the We'll feedback, just wait for that. We'll listen. We'll just wait for what comes out of the meetings, I think is the next series of steps. Okay. So okay. I did have one thing. I know that Sean and Elizabeth, you were both on the community call, but um, sure. two things that I think I wanted to bring forward to the value working group as we continue to meet. One is, um, in an effort to kind of increase our mentorship um, as, as we have new people joining our working groups, if you notice new people joining and we're assigning action items, mm -hmm. it's a good idea to try and assign two people to an action item, perhaps one person who's been involved in the project for longer and one person who is newer to the project. 
So if Sean picked up an action item, right, just assigning somebody else to that action item who might be new to the project, mm -hmm. and then it would right. be an opportunity for Sean and the new person, whomever that might be, to kind of work together in a time-bounded frame on an action right. item that's due in two weeks. And I really like that idea. And then um, the other thing is maybe in the value working group, I mean, obviously not today, but I think, Sean, are you doing this in evolution? Like uh, how we're supposed to revisit some of our metrics from prior releases? Yeah, <laughs> yeah Kevin's been going around uh, waving that flag. So yeah, we're doing that in okay. evolution. In DEI, we're gonna start doing like one metric a week. You know, like we just, just we're like, let's go take a look at diversity access tickets, right? right? And we just look at it and we read it as a group. And if there's any edits, we make those changes. Yeah, exactly. So we, we don't have many metrics in the value, but we can do it one a week, like one yeah. in a meeting. Yep. Yep. So every agenda item yeah. includes at least one metric to re examine. Yep. I'll include that in the next meeting. Yep. All right. I've added. All right, cool. That works. Yeah. I think that's. Yeah. I think this is good. <laughs> yeah, we could. Yeah, I don't think we need to extend this any further because we won't get anything really accomplished with five minutes. Yeah. Other than to say that I don't totally recognize your shirt, Sean. Oh, that's from the OSS summit that was in San Diego. I yeah, I think you know, uh, that was there. We we all three were. Was that twenty eighteen? I think maybe. I mean, I was there, yeah. but I don't remember that yes. at all. I got like three, four shirts at the end. They were like just you pick three and I bring it everyone. They all like that? Yes. Huh. I have even one more if you need that. But it's a size medium. Yeah, I I just must have had to picked it up, is all I'm thinking. <clears throat> yeah, you, you probably were. Yeah, maybe I just forgot or something. Or or you can look at Nate's drawer and find it. possible. <laughs> 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 all right, well. All right. Well, but not if you have an extra large. Yeah, I'll take it. Not an extra large. If you have an I, additional large. I have a medium. So if you want medium, I can share. Like, no, I'm not going to cut it. <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> I, right. I'll look into my stock again. I don't think I'll take right. an extra large. But... All right. Okay. I'll okay. catch you later. You. Thanks, everybody. <clears throat> Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.